call the meeting of the Arlington Finance Committee to order. Uh, first order of business. Well, why don't we just go right to the uh, hearing for the Arts and Culture Commission. Uh, this was in our article on committees and commissions. Uh, last year, or this year, we appropriated 35000 um, And so, uh, who's going to be speaking for you? We, we all are, but... Okay. Uh, like to Do you want to introduce, introduce your people? On sure. I'm Steve Poltergypski. I'm the, the treasurer of the uh, Arts and Culture Commission. I'm Kristen Canterbury-Bagnell. I'm the co-chair of the Arts and, and Culture Commission. And I'm Stuart Ikeda. I'm also co-chair of the Arts and Culture Commission. So first, um, thank you for hearing us tonight. Uh, I did want to just start with a word of thanks to Annie LaCour. Uh, because she helped us, we're so excited about what we do. <laughs> and we would have brought a much longer presentation for you tonight, and we, she really helped, got, you know, helped us select what would be useful for you to hear. So thank you. Um, I also want to say, because Kristen and I are new, just take a very brief period of time to introduce ourselves and where we're coming from into the commission, because as you know, uh, we owe a real debt to the past co-chairs, uh, Adrian and Stephanie, who have presented here before to you, who really provided leadership in a, a time of rapid startup growth and herded a lot of cats of committees that never worked together before and really led us very uh, wonderfully through a period of infrastructure building and team building that was really necessary for us to get to the point where we are now. So, thank you. Um, um, yeah. Can we go to the next slide? Um, so, through that period of growth that Stuart described, ACAC has been given a mandate to grow arts and culture in Arlington. Arts and culture is part of the town's master plan, um, which was endorsed by town meeting. And Arlington also has an arts and culture action plan which um, developed through a public process that involved over a thousand citizens who uh, voluntarily came to meetings and contributed to um, the mandate that is strengthen and grow arts and culture opportunities in Arlington, leading to a thriving arts and cultural life for all. Um, and so that through, was through that process that ACAC was created as an umbrella organization to work with all the nonprofits in town in arts and culture organizations to amplify their messages and turn what was a thriving group of individual organizations and artists into a sector um, that has um, multiplier effects throughout. Yeah, that. Oh, sure, just to give you a little bit of a sense of us, um, Stuart and I are both in our ACAC roles volunteering in what we also do professionally, so I'm an arts um, administrator and producer with over 20 years nationally, <coughs> internationally, and locally um, creating shared experiences through the arts for communities. And Stuart? Um, so briefly, uh, I have an arts background myself in the distant past, but I've had a long uh, marketing communications career in a variety of industries ranging from publishing to tech to academia to tourism. Uh, I'm now a uh, Director of Marketing and Communications at the Umbrella Arts Center in Concord, working with the, the town committee and other arts organizations out there as well in my day job. Um, and I am returning to Arlington after decades, or to Massachusetts after decades away. I'm a relatively recent new transplant, having been a former Cantabrigian <laughs> and lived in uh, the Midwest for over 20 years. I chose to move back to Arlington um, ultimately because of the education and the cultural life and the quality of life that the arts and culture and, and val educational values uh, and the volunteer spirit um, provide, you know, the quality of life that those provide here. Uh, I chose to move here over Cambridge and Somerville and Lexington and Belmont. Um, right away when I came, I volunteered for my PTO, I, volu I volunteered to become a town meeting member, and I was there in 2018 when we voted to expand ACAC and really looked at the master plan and the cultural plan, and we voted to add all these committees. And I was so excited by the plan and the aggressive goals that were stated there 
uh, that I voted for it, and I immediately went and volunteered to do what I could do to help implement the plan um, and especially fulfill this mandate to grow, to create a distinctive cultural destination that would add to the quality of life of our town. So I'm the school committee uh, appointee because uh, that has always been very important to me to connect those aspects of our town as well. So all of that's to say um, I'm I'm not just a dealer, I'm a user. <laughs> I love this town and what we're going to do for it. So. Great, with that, do you want to take this to the Yeah, sure, uh, go back to the last one. Just to underscore the, uh, the point at the bottom, which is that we believe, and we hope that you believe, that arts and culture is a strategic asset for Arlington. It's something that differentiates the town from other towns that, um, you know, that compete for us for visitors and for residents and for to, to keep the, the, the folks here and to add to the cultural lives of the people who live here. So, and we'll come back to, to this to note uh, And I know we're here to, uh, yep, to, uh, to talk about the, um, <coughs> the funding that is provided to uh, uh, our, the, the commission and to arts and culture um, in general. I think it's also important to understand the kind of leverage that uh, we get from this funding um, in, in the form of additional fundraising. Now this chart depicts uh, the, uh, the fundraising that, that we, uh, we accomplish on top of town funding. Um, and it provides a period of some years. Um, this year, um, we're at approximately uh, 39,000 uh, raised so far either you know, money in the bank or money in your bank, um, but and also funds pledged, and we're we're working hard to uh, raise the additional uh, increment uh, up there. And our goal is uh, over fifty thousand dollars a year in, in fundraising, which is uh, quite an achievement, I think. Um, but that's uh, that's not the only leverage that we we're talking about here. The additional leverage is for all the money that's spent on arts and culture, and these are for some pretty solid studies, have shown that, for example, for every dollar spent uh, on arts and culture, there's a return of about $2.30 uh, in um, the form of incremental sales uh, for, for nearby businesses. And anybody who wants to see the study, we have the, the, uh, the references and the links and so on. Um, and also, uh, another study shows that um, if uh, someone comes to an arts and culture related event, uh, they tend to spend about a little over thirty dollars on top of whatever the ticket price might be. Uh, so it's bolstering and boosting the, the local economy um, in a way I think that you know is, uh, is significant. Uh, and we have some uh, local businesses who uh, can or we're attesting to that here. There's one uh, Abe Salhi who, who uh, runs the uh, Arlington Service Station, who was a recipient of the. 2019 Chamber of Commerce uh, Business of the Year uh, Award said new customers are coming to them because of the uh, the public art that's uh, located there and the one of the events that we sponsor, which is called Garage Band. Um, Bob Bowes, who's one of the uh, preeminent local realtors, saying that uh, prospective homeowners uh, come to Arlington because of uh, the vibrancy of the community, particularly the arts and culture scene. And, we have another business owner that says she chose to locate here because of the uh, support for arts and culture. So, uh, and, you know, Ted uh, Palusa, who's a, a, you know, very, very well known to everyone here, is, uh, has attested to the, this being a, a destination, a cultural destination for visitors. So, you know, this is probably one of the reasons why Arlington was recognized as the 18th best small city in America. And on the, one of the factors was the quality of life, which is, a, Arts and culture is part of that. So there's, um, you're getting a lot for the investment. Um, we can go to the next slide. And uh, just not going to go through any of this in any detail. This is just to give a, a sense. Um, it's, a, it's just a, the things that are going on, all the, the events, the, uh, the public art that's along the bikeway that's, shown, that's seen by hundreds of thousands of people. Um, the, uh, the live arts performances, which thousands of people have come to, their festivals and banners could go on, and there's, there's a lot more to say about these things, but I think you all probably know many of these things already. That this is, uh, Arlington is, is becoming 
uh, a cultural destination. And it's, uh, it's I think, something to, to be very proud of. And we're proud to be part of it. So the numbers. Um, we showed you the, the fundraising before. This, this shows uh, the balance of it, which is that there are expenses as, as well. Um, this year, our budget is uh, a little over $85,000. Most of that is, is spent on programming, whether it be public art and you know, various installations or cultural events and festivals. And like I said, this is the, the, the fundraising pays for most of this. The, the, the town gives them 30, 35000 Fundraising exceeds that. It's, it's $40,000, $50,000 in fundraising. So uh, that's how we pay for, <coughs> for these things. And that's why the province has become sort of the town that it is. Um, so uh, and, and also, you can see that the, uh, the revenue, the donations come from various sources, include individuals, businesses, grants, uh, and so on. So, uh, Going on to the next one, this is for next year. Um, we're planning on more fundraising. Uh, so uh, going from about 87, uh, um, sorry, uh, yeah, 87,000 to uh, 92,000. That includes the, the town money, which we're, we're asking for level funding of 35,000 for this upcoming fiscal year. Uh, and there's commensurate um, investment of that into the cultural assets, which is the, uh, the public art, the, uh, the events that people come to and uh, enrich their lives, and so on. And some decent chunk for marketing, because, which is essential both to get people out to participate, but also uh, for fundraising. Because until, unless you can tell a story and people are familiar with what you're doing, it's, it's a challenge to fundraise. And so, um, that is, uh, marketing is a very important part of what we do as well. And the marketing is also a significant part of our support of the sector broadly because the marketing costs are um, shared across the website and that applies to all the arts and culture organizations in town that promote their um, activities and efforts through Arts Arlington Babylon. Okay. And this is the, the final slide. It just shows a three-year projection of fiscal years 21 through uh, 23 which we're planning on uh, increasing fundraising by you know, a reasonable amount uh, each year, both individual and business donations. There's a bump up in the middle in terms of the grants we're looking for. That'd be a one-time thing where we feel the need to um, uh, get some support uh, to develop a, um, a public art master plan, public art being such an important thing of what we do. And we'd like to do it in a more planful way. Uh, so we're, or plan, we were thinking of or anticipating um, applying for a grant uh, for that to the tune of 25000 and that would account for that additional uh, hump in, in the middle there. But after that, it'll <coughs> come further back to not being so, uh, so extraordinary or unusual. Uh, and we're, we'll also anticipate there'll be level funding from the town in order to help us accomplish the things that um, we're doing and we hope that you believe, also believe in. Um, there, there'll be uh, commensurate, commensurate uh, increases in uh, the public art that's uh, uh, provided, the uh, cultural events and uh, marketing. And we're also planning that a little bit more uh, into fundraising because you, know, you need this uh, invest in some fundraising in order to uh, sort of increase our, our game, our fundraising game, so to speak. So uh, from fiscal year 19 to 23, that, um, I guess, five-year period, um, we anticipate that the fundraising, will, which does not include town funding, uh, will increase by 69%, and um, which I think is pretty good. That's all I have. Uh, so we have happy to answer any questions. Okay. okay. Would any of the other participants want to add something to this? Okay. You said Throw. it beautifully. <laughs> you guys did great. <laughs> questions? Terrell. Looking at the fiscal 20 budget year mm -hmm. to year today, it looks like on the revenue side, Elections are running behind. We've got four months left in the fiscal year. How confident are you that you can hit the yeah. target? So, 
So I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, Steve, that the actuals here don't include the pledge funds because they are not literally actual yet. But you so have them. We have commit. We have written commitments from people. Um, so the so this shows a greater delta um, than the grass show um, okay. because of that. Of the thirteen thousand remaining to be raised, um, we have we're in conversation on about. 6,000 of it, so those are not pledges, but they are um, people who have indicated an interest and we're in conversation about it. And we have um, a number of events this spring. Because of the way the weather works, our calendar is front loaded toward the spring. So we so we have an annual fundraiser called Chairful that Adria <laughs> leads that has been successful for many years. That will happen in June in conjunction with ACA's Porch Fest. Um, we will be part of the townwide yard sale in May. Uh, we'll have a craftivist yard there, uh, and we have a house party planned um, this spring, and we will also uh, collect donations at a number of our live arts events. So we're going to work hard, uh, and I don't want to be overconfident, but I would say we're confident. I, I would add to that we're also participating in some statewide promotion events like Art Week, where we've been increasingly reaching out to other businesses um, to participate and sponsor with some of these higher profile events uh, with us as well as I mean last year we were able to successfully take some of this money at, that we started with and leverage it into uh, partnerships with the schools on things like Fox Festival parade and so forth so I mean, that's again it's it is seasonal um, but there are more than there, there are multiple strategies we're pursuing to try to hit this aggressive goal so, um, you're running behind on spending in a couple of crucial categories. You've spent nothing on the website, and you've only spent $145 on fundraising. Do you want to talk a little bit about whether you plan to spend that money in the next four months? Yes. <laughs> so, it's a little um, bit, always how? a little bit of a fire drill towards the end of the fiscal year. But yeah. keeping in mind that well, a good chunk of the spending is weather dependent in terms of the spring coming on. Uh -huh. We have these uh, public performances, and we give stipends to the artists who perform, and that's a that's a chunk of money right there. And uh, I think you, you have some other uh, commentary on, uh, on the website. On the, uh, yeah. Well, okay. the, webs the website. Um, we we uh, one of the elements of the website is the, the linkage to Arts Boston uh, calendar, mm -hmm. which is a uh, region-wide uh, cultural uh, event calendar, and we uh, we subscribe to that, and we get a sort of Arlington-specific uh, uh, application associated with that, and, and we pay a fee for that, and, and that always is late in coming in, and so that's another aspect, and that goes under the website. How much is that fee? That's fifteen hundred. Okay. Yeah. So yes, all of this money is is planned very specifically to be spent by June thirtieth. Yeah. Yes, we have. I. I didn't do the math precisely, but I think over 90% of our events are in May and June. Yeah, I was less worried about the events, which I know are lucky, the and then the fact that it looked like fundraising was low, but fundraising spending was also low, and so I was just concerned that there was a plan. Yes, uh, with Chairful and the house party and the yard sale yet to come, you know, there'll be signs for the yard sale. There'll be, um, there are some upfront costs associated with Chairful. And so I, far, I, I spent can spend $20 on stamps. <laughs> yeah. I, I can also speak to the website a bit. Uh, we are currently going through an audit of all, not just the website, artsarlington.org, but all of the interrelated properties in our MailChimp newsletter platform, our social media channels, again, the, the API that we buy from um, Arts Boston. We are, we are taking in commentary now on the usability of the site and planned expansion. Uh, to different features of the website, so that will account for some of the, <coughs> the development time that we're looking to do um, as a lot of this program, the, these, this increased programming comes online, we're going to need to revisit all of that. Um, it's also what some of our subcommittees are doing, such as the Arlington Cultural District, uh, they're looking to develop more. Um, so there will be other development costs on the website to keep it growing. You mentioned subcommittees, and it's probably worth just reiterating that um, we, as an entity, are only about two years old. Mm -hmm. I mean, we go back some time, but uh, we're the combination of uh, several other commissions and committees uh, that had previously, some of which have been separately funded. And so now we're sort of 
operating smoothly in all cylinders uh, as one, one big happy time. Other questions? John? Um, maybe I spent too much time at the fried dough stand instead of looking elsewhere, but we, did you guys participate in town day? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I, I missed it, actually. Nope. We were there, we had to. Yeah. I assume you can reach the website from the town website? Yes, you yes. can. Okay. Yes, you can also reach it directly, artsarlington.org. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other questions? Can I, I just want to get a clarification. It's 25 grand is in 2022. Yes. 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 The, uh, that's a special uh, grant that we'd be looking for in order to create a uh, public art master plan. So if we get the grant, we'll why it's in 2022 and not in 2021, you know what I'm saying? Of course. Why in 2022 and not in 2021? Yeah. Because we won't be ready to apply for an NEA grant in 2021. Um, it's a scale of grant. Um, it would, and I'm going to check this with Adria, I think it would be the most significant size grant that ACAC um, has applied for in that vein, and the federal grants are extremely complicated. Um, and we want to do it right and once if it's, um, if it's an arduous and time consuming process, both applying for it and administering it once <coughs> we have it. Um, so we really want to be ready and we're working with the Department of Planning and Community Development to get to the, um, to the point that we have the capacity to do that. Other questions? I just want to make a comment. Um, I just sure. thought it might be worth mentioning that there was also um, there's also a strategic plan and an operations plan that underpins this budget. And if you'd like to see those, you can access them through our website as well. You absolutely can. Thank you, Stephanie. And I also brought a couple copies of any of the strategic plan if anyone's interested. Are there any with the NEA NEA grant? Are there any significant strength and in required local share or? Anything? It is, it is, there is a local match. So we would be looking at how, so we would be allocating our raised funds and possibly some of our town funds differently that year in terms of how we think about our activities. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, well thank you very much for coming thank before you. us. We really thank appreciate you. it. And we appreciate the information. And the opportunity. We appreciate your hard work. Quite Thank appreciate you. Thank you. <laughs> and, and we yours. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, yes. Okay. Um, minutes. How are you doing? Good to see you. Good to see you. Hey, Ted. Okay. Does anybody have any uh, comments or corrections? Uh, for the minutes. Okay. Uh, actually, I didn't either. Oh, so, my goodness. I know. I'll look harder next time. Uh, don't forget to check your attendance. And again, any numbers that are in here from your budgets, please, please, please double check that. Um, okay. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Okay, moved and seconded to accept the uh, minutes as presented. Um, I think there were a few comments or corrections, you know, over the internet uh, uh, directly, but uh, okay. All those in favor of accepting the minutes as presented, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Minutes are accepted. Okay. Um, I want to remind everybody to please uh, take your uh, conflict of interest test. Um, I did mine today, two, three, four times. I finally got it. No. Did you beat my uh, score? I'm sorry? Did you, did you beat my score? No, I didn't see a score. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I just copied your answers, you know. Um, <coughs> so please try to get that ready as soon as you can. And then give a copy or email it to, uh, to Liz. Shall we? Uh, yes. Uh, I was just thinking about the presentation that we just saw. 
and um, I'd like to thank Annie for working with this committee because I thought it was uh, really a uh, not much job. I, I appreciate the kudos, guys, but it is true that, that I, I think the new crew that was before you tonight also helped a lot, that they had more of a sense of what we were actually looking for and how to put together an uh, efficient uh, presentation. And all I had to do was talk them out of about five slides. <laughs> Okay, that's great. Uh, Wednesday we'll be uh, hearing from the uh, Capital Budget Committee, uh, Capital Program Committee um, at 7.30, so that usually takes a chunk of time, so if everybody could be here. Um, okay, arts and uh, culture. Uh, everybody heard the presentation uh, last year, or for this year, uh, we reduced it from 40,000 down to 35. Uh, I think the hope was long term that we could, you know, that they would not become addicted to town money. Uh, this is, saw this in way of seed money. Uh, they're requesting 35,000. Now, did everybody get the letter from the manager? Okay, everybody read it? Okay, so the managers, for those of you who didn't, uh, Continue impressed with their ability to raise private funds, which they have combined with very successful grant writing. Uh, he's recommending that uh, we uh, vote the amount that's been uh, requested at thirty-five thousand. So what is? Sorry. Move thirty-five thousand. Second. Okay, it's moved and seconded for thirty-five thousand. Discussion. John. Um, this isn't really it discussion about them is a little bit more the discussion of the finance committee and how we communicate with other groups and um, you know after we voted last year to reduce the funding and and there was some confusion because they thought well we didn't have to come back and, and we said oh no you have to come back and so I went and I I read the minutes and then I also watched the uh, hearing when we had them and, and I think that the source of the confusion came from during the part that they were testifying presenting. Um, the message they got was, well, we'd like to have you uh, present, but as long as you'll have a funding, you generally don't have to come back the next year. You don't have to come back the next year. That was what the chairperson said to them. And then they left. And then there was a discussion in the finance committee, and the finance committee sort of came to a consensus, well, actually, maybe this should be seed money, and maybe we'd like to see the money go down over time. And that was what was reported in the minutes. So I, I think that maybe when groups come, we should say, hey, maybe you should watch the discussion afterwards or watch what happens next. Because I think they were sort of blindsided by this because they didn't think to watch the minutes. Or we would think, think to watch the um, rest of the hearing. And uh, you know, it's just a general comment that I think that we could do a little better um, and avoid that sort of uh, miscommunication. Okay. Good, good comment. Okay, any other discussion? Okay, motion's been made and seconded for 35000 for arts and culture. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Now, uh, let me go through the committees and commissions. Since we've just done this. Uh, now this is Article 62. And all the other committees and commissions, the historical commission ever get back to you, Liz? Okay, so Liz has contacted all the other committees on the uh, Article 62. Uh, we just heard from the one committee uh, that, that has a fairly large amount of money. Um, and uh, what we should do now, what I recommend we do is just go through it and I'll read the committee and the amount for each of them. And if anybody would like to hold to discuss it further, then 
say hold. Okay, I'll, I'll uh, copy town meeting on this. If we get through the whole thing, um, nobody's hold, then I, I'll, t I'll accept one vote to, uh, to do all the committees and commissions. Okay? So if you want to discuss anyone, John? Could you just mention whether that's uh, a level or if there's an increase? All of them are level. Okay, fine, thank you. Okay. Um, Arlington Historic Commission, $2,660. And again, these are all the same as last year or this year. Uh, Historic District Commissions, 5100 uh, Capital budget, their usual zero. Committees on uh, Disability, 25000 Recycling Committee, 3000 Human Rights Commission, 7500 Arlington Tourism and Economic Development, 4275 Envision Arlington, 3000 It's the old Vision 2020. Transportation Advisory Committee, uh, 2000. Scenic Byway Commission, 2000. Open Space Committee, 300. Uh, L LGBTQIA and Rainbow Commission, 4000. The Arts and Culture, we just passed at 35,000. Um, and those are all the committees. Uh, I can hear a hold. Would anybody like to make a motion? John? I probably should have said something about the disabilities. That was, what, what was that? There was a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, John, I, I'm the sorry. Disabilities. The, the Commission on Disability? 25,000. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. We have, we have a funding stream for that, don't we? Uh, funding sources, property tax. Mm, I don't. No, I thought, I thought there was some part of the parking district or some other form of no, that was something they wanted to do, but we said no. Okay. I think we felt at the time that that money should go into the general fund and the, and the amount should be justified. Yeah. Okay. That's correct. Right. Alan? Did you mention the scenic byway? He did. Did you yes. mention the scenic byway? Yeah. In 2000? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Okay. 2000. Any other questions? I have a question. Yeah, Charlie. In the article here, it says uh, Human Recourses Board. Just is that, that must be a typo. <laughs> Should be resources. Is that in the Warren article? Yeah. About uh, three or four lines <coughs> at the bottom. Of course, it's resources. Human Rights Commission. No, Human Resources Board. Human Resources Board. Next right after Commission yeah. on Disability. Human Resources Board. Whatever that is. That's the old personnel board. My guess is this article has been here for the same article for 30 years. And if anything gets new, it usually just gets added at the end. So I'm not sure what the Human Resource Board is. But they didn't ask us for any money. That's, that's the Personnel Board, which used to be called the Personnel Board. Well, how are Human Resources? They're not asking for any money? Never have. I want, is that the, well, Carolyn's not here, unfortunately. Uh, there was a board which the human uh, resources director uh, would make decisions on reclassifications, and there'd be a board that would review them yes. for appeals. Is that the board? Yes. Okay. I guess that's it, but they've never asked for anything. You know, all they hear is a few appeals. Okay, is there any other questions? Okay, do I have a motion? So moved. For the whole article. The whole article. Okay, and second? Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous? <sighs> do you have the total there, no. Well, we go on to the next one. If somebody has a calculator or could add that up, that'd be great. Okay, budgets. Fire. Fire? Okay. 
What page? Start on page 120. Okay, floor is yours. Uh, all right. Um, uh, not much happening in, in terms of salaries, and I'm going to be recommending the amount that's requested here. Uh, the changes that you see from 2020 uh, are all uh, contract-driven. Um, and, um, and as you can see, on a percentage basis, there's, um, there's not a lot going on. The 1.3% increase in salaries overall. Um, expenses, uh, however, um, uh, I'm going to be recommending the following increases uh, to two line items. One is 5203 repair and maintenance, uh, and I'll be recommending a $3,000 increase uh, to the 2021 budget amount, and I'll explain what's going on in a minute. And then to line item five, uh, account 5224, other supplies, I'm recommending a $4,000 increase uh, so that um, uh, that number will now be $14,000. And what's going on here is that um, um, Chief Kelly had uh, requested a $17,000 increase in expenses. Um, and uh, um, that $17,000 increase had been approved by the town, um, but it, the increase was put into the facilities budget, mm. not into the fire budget. Um, there was a back and forth between Sandy and Chief Kelly and, and Jim Feeney, the director of facilities, and uh, all parties agreed that um, 10000 of that $17,000 increase would stay in the facilities budget, um, but that 7000 would be transferred from facilities, the facilities budget as it's in this book back to fire. So when we get to the facilities budget, we're going to have to do the you know, commensurate and compensating decrease to those expense lines, whoever has the facilities budget. Christine. Uh, I, I have a, a memo signed by Sandy needing documentation for Okay, can you share that with Christine? I certainly can. Okay, so the change is three thousand, uh, one thousand to three thousand. So, so one thousand to four thousand for for five two zero three, and from ten thousand to fourteen thousand for five two two four. So the bottom line numbers for fire expenses goes from uh, 413 400 to 420 400 for an increase of um, of fifty four hundred dollars so going from a decrease of twenty four hundred to an increase of fifty four hundred. The fire appropriation total for 2021 goes to 79660025 for an increase of 99879. And then the fire taxation total goes to 7754729 for an increase of 98087. I don't know what those percentages turn out to. Okay, so is that your motion? Oh, I'm sorry.
Oh, uh, yeah, and I'm sorry. Uh, the increase under fire expenses is 4,600, not 5,400. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> it's that new math. Okay, so is that your motion? That's my motion. Is that seconded? Second. Okay. Um, do you have anything else you want to add to this budget? I mean, add an informational point of view. <laughs> Uh, I do not, well, I should mention that uh, Chief Kelly said that they are um, on, on, um, they are on budget uh, for fiscal year 2020 to date, and they have their, you know, approximately two-thirds to the budget year, and they've spent about two-thirds of their 2020 budget. So they're right on track, even though they've had uh, a, a number of uh, unexpected retirements. They're going to, uh, so they expect not to have a, any, they expect not to request any reserve fund transfers this year? Not at this point, no. Okay, discussion, questions? Okay, the motion's been made and seconded for $7,754,229. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous? 3 2 20. Okay, do you have any other budgets? I do not. I'm sorry? That's all I have is mine. Arif? Yes, thank you. You can start with the uh, IT button. It's on page 31. documents actually that weren't received electronically but we got them this morning uh, in paper form perhaps we'll get them later on these are more of uh, statistics quarterly reports that he does to show the stats which we can, can send it around and once I get the electronics I'll send that as well um, so I want to start off by mentioning a couple of things before jumping into the numbers and uh, I don't know, this is all information to me, good information to me, so I'm sharing it in terms of what does the IT department actually do. So I just think it's uh, it's quite positive and, well, it's information, let's put it that way. They have 98% uptime. They serve 25, they have 25 buildings where there are servers, 1,000 personal computers, 150 cellular PDAs, over 200 printers, 5,500 tablets, and so forth, um, 125 network switches, 25 VOIP telephone switches, 750 phones, 600 wireless access points, etc. What I want to mention by that is that uh, they do they do have a lot of infrastructure that they manage, and uh, they have about 8,000 pieces of uh, equipment that they manage, with 6,000 of it being in the hands of uh, students and faculty. So those are sort of the positive aspects of what they're doing. There are some uh, there are some challenges, and I'll just mention them at the outset, and then I'll get into the budget numbers and so forth. The challenges have to do with the building of the high school, and uh, and therefore the movement of the infrastructure, because effectively most of this infrastructure is based at the high school, and in order to move these core networks, this is going to be quite a challenge. Um, so that's what they're grappling with. Um, the, where they want to move it is a DPW building, from what I understand, but that is seven months behind the schedule of the new <coughs> um, high school building. So that in itself, I leave that as, as information. But uh, so that's what they're grappling with, and, and those are the positive the pros and the cons and the good, good work that they're doing. We met with them this morning, too, so um, they it good. Now I'm looking at this uh, page, uh, 33 the top and um, some of the questions that I had and so I'll work through those so that perhaps answer some of the questions you may have. Um, other purchased services, 5236, uh, there's a significant bump there of 25,000. 
this has to do with a security audit cost and uh, initially they've, they've actually applied for this uh, as a grant from Homeland Security but that will take a significant amount of time they're not even sure if it will come through and so this needs to be done and this they plan on doing this every two to three years so what he's done is uh, David has allocated $25,000 for that security audit cost it's okay I'm oh, sorry Arif we're talking about other purchase services correct mm -hmm. yes okay five two three six uh, yep and um, like I said he's taken a estimate not quite sure whether 25,000 will cover it but that's number one that's where you see that increase the other piece is uh, 5292 network maintenance I'll go through this and then certainly you can ask me questions after this if you have it um, network maintenance this again is uh, an increase um, this has to do with uh, 500 plus I mentioned 600 access points that he uh, that need to be upgraded also in town meeting I guess they had decided that everybody should be using electronics and uh, and therefore there was a town hall auditorium network enhancements that were made and so that also adds that component that cost to it um, let's see what else uh, if I go down to the other one the glaring one which is 5353 Munis software support uh, you all probably know a lot more about what's been going on in terms of Munis over the years uh, or the last couple of years where they've taken on and um, uh, moved to that system. Um, this 120,000 is, uh, is really for taking Munis and moving it to the cloud. And one of the questions that we did ask, you know, I was quite shocked actually that uh, with this infrastructure and the building movement and everything else, why wasn't already everything in the cloud? Uh, however, uh, it is what it is. This is how they will move. And this 120,000 is to take Munis and move it to the cloud. Um, should point out a couple of other things. Um, For those of our home audience and the few non-technical people that might be on this committee, could you explain that? Yes, of course. So. Effectively, software can be uh, provided in two fashions, various fashions. Let's just keep it very simple for the non-technical people. But one is just on-premise, which means it's on your server in a piece of hardware that's sitting with you and being served out. So it's a centralized way of serving this, whatever it may be. And in this case, Munis software uh, being served out from a central location, which is what they're grappling with, because when you move the buildings and the network connections and all that, that becomes a challenge. When you move something to the cloud, uh, not literally speaking, but effectively these are servers that are in the internet cloud and that can be accessed using an internet connection, which I think all of us here use, either through our mobile phones or through um, cable or other uh, network providers. So having that ability of having that software served in the cloud, so to speak, a, there's a, a multiple advantages. One is all of it is accessible um, from where in, in you know from various points. You don't have to go to a centralized server to access it. Um, the other is the, the the security aspect of it, as well as the maintenance uh, aspect of it, as well as if your system goes down. For example, if the building burns down or your somehow your on-premise server is destroyed. Uh, having an in, in the cloud solution allows you to not worry about that situation because it's already available to you in the cloud. So the, the maintenance and all that is provided by the host uh, who is providing with the software, with the cloud solution and so forth. Now, let it be clear that this sort of, it's not just one time put it in the cloud and then all the costs will go down, okay? It will be a shift in thinking of how this cost is appropriated. In, in terms of uh, typical software, you buy it, you buy a capex, and then you do uh, incremental software maintenance opex, operational expense, capital expense. Um, but in, in, in terms of software as a service or software in the cloud, yes, you pay a certain amount up front, but typically you are paying as you go. It's a recurring um, uh, amount that you will be paying on a monthly, uh, quarterly, however you negotiate those terms. 
I hope that's uh, enough of an explanation. Okay. Any questions? Is it John and then Alan? So, um, so that last point. Um, so the budget here of two hundred eighty-three thousand for Munis software support. Um, will that then continue? Is that essentially the you mean the, 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 the fee, the, an annual no, fee that you're total. paying for the for the cloud-based service, or no? That's not. They don't. They don't know that amount as yet. So I don't know if it's going to be as high as that every year. Okay. But he wasn't clear on uh, whether that is. I I believe it will go down some. Yeah. But uh, he seems to think that it will get absorbed in some way, shape, or form. So. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Alan? Um, yeah, that, that was one of my questions, whether it was going to be a, a recovering or whether it was a startup. And, and the other, you know, moving to the cloud, you typically reduce your, you know, in on-premises um, cost, but they're spending so little for on-premises hardware anyway, there's really no savings there. Um, uh, two questions, Informix, we're still, Dean might know this, we're still using, I thought that was for the old tax system. There's, there's a couple of people still using it. Water and sewer. Water and sewer collections are still on the forex. Okay, does that move off? Uh, 18 months, he said. Yeah. Okay. They can't um, move water. Just so we're all on the same page. They can't move water. They're not. I actually made this decision. Um, you can't. We have old meters in town. So some of them are still the old meter technology. Mm -hmm. And so you have to sort of an order of operations. So you have to get everybody off of the old meters before we could get off of the old, um, whatever it's called, Informix system. Mm -hmm. Because if you moved to the new system with the old meters, you would then have to do it again when you went to the new meters. So it worked out the quickest way, even though it's causing this system to last longer than it should. And the other question, I'm sorry if I missed this. I know there was a, this is probably part of the strategic plan implementation moving everybody on Office 365, is that? Yes, it's going to happen in the next two to three months. In the uh, next? Well, the Microsoft Exchange system will happen in the next two to three months. <coughs> Sorry, and they're looking at Office 365, but... Uh, but they're moving to Exchange. They're moving to Exchange first, right. In okay. the next two to three months, then they've got things to move to the cloud, that is when we mentioned the Munis, and on mail, they've got Google, and then they've got MD. Both right. of those, they're looking to move into Office 365. So those are going away. Correct. Right. Okay. And, and Office 365, for this many users, is going to have a pretty large bill. Well, yeah. Where that ends up in a future budget. Okay. Brian? I was just going to say that um, I was in the meeting um, with the read, and he said there would be a significant reduction from the 120. He said, but there is a cost. They just didn't know what it was, but it should be substantially less than that for maintaining it. Mm -hmm. Now, will the the security audit, will that be more of a one-shot? That should be a one-shot. And uh, as, uh, as I mentioned, um, he's expecting to do this every two to three years. Okay. <coughs> Um, so I think in this first time around when he does it, he'll have a better idea as to what the real cost is. Right now it's just uh, 25 grand is a estimation. How many workstations can you say they're supporting? Roughly. How do you define workstations? <laughs> yeah, desktop, laptop. Eight, eight, Not a prayer. He said 8,000 pieces of equipment, 6,000 in the hands of students and teachers. Uh, but then I'm reading this other piece here. It says 5,500 tablets, <coughs> 1,000 personal computers. This is in this uh, report that we come up with. Uh, okay. where he has an update. And 24,000 actually sounds a little low for security. OK. Are you set, Brian? One other no, no, I'm just oh, okay. 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 One other piece I should mention is in the salary detail, there's a vacant position, but that position has been hired. He converted one of the consultants to a full-time position, and so the consulting fees or the consulting amount will he expects that to uh, to go down. He hired the consultant. Yeah. Okay, Charlie. 
Yeah, I just wanted to clarify something. Um, we mentioned that uh, uh, surprise that the uh, software was not on the cloud. And you may recall that the, uh, the Finance Committee approved uh, approximately uh, $750,000 of Munis software expenditures over the last three years. That was basically a, a, a big upgrade to get uh, the Munis software program away from, I don't know, Windows uh, XP or something like that to to a more uh, modern platform. That's That took a, a lot of time and a lot of expense, and they have completed that. But they could not move to the cloud until they got to that new level of software. And they are there now. Other questions, George. Question: <coughs> Why the water sewer offset didn't change really when the budget went up by 17 percent? It could be, of course, if we're still on Informix for water sewer, that maybe that piece didn't. But typically, I would think that IT would be supporting some some water sewer things that might have increased. It looks like the water sewer offset didn't change. You know, the budget is. Which one are you looking at? The offset line? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can I answer? I used to ask this question every year. Yes. I know the answer. Okay, Dean. So the offsets <coughs> that appear in the current, for the 2021 budget, are based on the expenses of the prior year. And the policy, which makes rational sense, is because this budget hasn't been approved, it's subject to change. And so if we, or the town meeting, were to make a change, we would then have to go through this whole process of changing all the offsets. Mm -hmm. And so they do a one-year lag on the offset because they know that budget has already been approved. I asked that question like five straight years. It was great. <laughs> I've got four left. Well, I didn't give me into the first four, so then I got it. Okay, George, you finished? Yes. Okay, Peter. All right. Um, did Did you get any details on what came out of the security audit? Well, it's not been done. Pardon? It hasn't been done yet. At least for next year. What'd you say? It hasn't been. It oh, hasn't it hasn't happened yet? No, it's not. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, John? Yeah, speaking of security audits, when I got my password, I called up somebody on the phone and they said, What do you want your password to be? <laughs> Sweet. Um, and that was the system last year. Um, I usually could have said, hey, yeah, this is Adam, um, and uh, I'd like my password changed or wherever I want to be in the town. Uh, I didn't do that. Um, Good on you. <laughs> uh, you said, what, so uh, you, you said maybe Office 365, definitely Microsoft Exchange. Uh, which of those solves that problem so that we can go to the technology of 2003 where they sort of send a message and get something back and say your password yourself without telling someone over the telephone? Yeah. That's a, which, 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 which my experience, that's, a, that's, uh, that's uh, Microsoft Exchange. Yeah. Once you have the Microsoft Exchange, I mean, we so have that at work. Well, so for, 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 for password security, one, you can change your own password. There's a lot of recovery things. There's two-factor authentication. And there's all sorts of complexity rules you can, you know, minimal complexity rules you can build in. So there's a, a big stack there. Um, now, it, that doesn't solve the problem of you call somebody and they say, sure, I'll change your password for you without any yeah. case. That's a human problem, and I don't know the technology. So it is Exchange or it's 365? Because I heard two people give two different answers. It's, they're, 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 it's an overlap. It's exchange is a subset of 365. Okay, but you said you also said Exchange we were going to get in three weeks, and Office 365 was at some point in the future. Yeah, was this what he I, said? I think they would get the Exchange license under the context of 365. In a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. It's the business essentials package. Yeah. And they're going to roll out Exchange before they roll out the rest of That's 365. Yeah, I mean, Exchange is like 75% of 365. Okay, but there's no money in the budget for that. Well, I think you just said that that's... If it's being rolled out in the next two to three months, that means... For exchange, it's five or six bucks a head per month. Okay. Okay. Multiply. So that's in there. So what's in your fiscal, question? In this year's budget. So what's your question? 
Well, Al, Alan mentioned that he thought that when we went to 365, there would be some considerable costs given the number of users. Yeah, but that will happen over time. I mean, it's not, that's not happening yet. But it's in this year's budget. It's in this budget. It is in this budget. In this the money for 365 and exchanges in this budget. Yeah. But once you get on that drip fee, okay, and then the number of users increase, what Alan was pointing out is that it's a soft, you know what I'm saying? It, the number of user per user, you'll be paying an annual fee. So that will increase over time. As we have users. Charlie? And John, they're also paying now for these other uh, applications they have, like the, what was the email server? The, the well, they, uh, it's called apps and, 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 and they, they have some Google, Google, yeah. Google programs they Google, use. Google, they, all, they all have fees, so they're subs somewhat substitutional, plus, okay. plus a startup. Yeah. Okay, any other questions? John? Yes, maybe this has already been answered, but I didn't really pay attention, but... The Munis software support is a large number year after year after year. Should it be as big as that? Yeah, because they keep, you want to pick them? Yeah, go ahead. So the Unix uh, software is principally at the uh, community sa safety uh, police station here. And it's, the, it's uh, the police servers are separate from the, um, what do you call it, general purpose commercial servers that the town uses for security reasons. And they're Unix based. So they have a separate maintenance budget, separate hardware budget, et cetera. I see. Okay. You said Munis. You said, no, he said Munis. Oh, I thought you said Unix. No, it's said Munis. Munis. Yeah, the Munis. This is the module bits. Oh, yeah. The Munis, I mean, this is like, this is business. I mean, if you have a big software package, whether so it comes from IBM or Munis or, or you know, any of the large software companies, you you buy a big chunk of, with a big chunk of money, you, you install a basic system, and then you wind up paying 10 or 20 percent a year for continued licensing and maintenance. That's what that is. So to give you an idea, okay. here's a good question, because this, but this is an infrastructure software that has multiple modules. Okay, so it's for the accounting department, it's for the, they have, they have Munis Financial, Excel, Power School, etc. different modules that are used across the town. Uh -huh. So I think each module it can be Excuse me. along with the base that should, that should stay open. It should stay open. Oh, sorry. Software, yeah. so. Okay, are there any other questions on the budget? George. A general question. Since much of this supports students and faculty, is there, do you have a sense of what the IT budget is on the school side? And is it ever worth looking at the two of them together for us just to make sure that it all looks coordinated and the totals are reasonable? Or is this covering a big chunk of the school IT costs? If we know. Uh, we, he has at least six people working on uh, the school side that don't show up in the town budget. Okay, I, I don't know what the financial number is, but maybe the people doing the school budget. There's, there's but software on the school budget side as well. Yeah. Software and hardware costs yeah. that are absorbed by the school budget. This seems like an awfully thin staff for supporting. Did you take a look at this thing? Did you take a look at the, we sent this around. Oh, you're saying this is a thin staff? Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> we were asking for more productivity now that you're spending more on Munis and stuff. I would say you should cut down the staff by half. Okay, other questions? There'll be a test on all this, by the way. Um, Especially what does VOIP stand for? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what is your recommendation? As printed? My recommendation is as printed. 1,065,327, is there a second? Second. Okay, is there any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous? And uh, anyway, I'm thinking about this with John's comment. 
Uh, could you let the arts and culture people know our vote? Yeah. Just shoot them an email or something. Okay. Additional budgets. I can do some more. Yeah. All right, let's go to the comptroller budget, which is the next uh, 37. Okay, so again, this was, uh, we met with Ida this morning as well. Uh, what do I want to highlight on this? I mean, this is a zero, zero increase in the expense side of the equation, and a modest increase on the salary side. The one thing that I did ask a question about was the male stipend, which is in the salary detail. To me, it was, uh, I didn't know what it was. So the explanation is that there is a person who goes to town hall, collects the mail, distributes checks, collects batches for account processing. It's a union person. So effectively, you have to pay a stipend. It's a modest amount, but that's what it's for. I'm sorry, once more, it's for mail pickup? It's for mm -hmm. mail pickup. It's for distribution of checks. It's for collecting batches for accounts process, um, yeah, AP. Um, accounts payable rather and because it's union the person is a union you know, I guess union person and therefore it gets a stipend. It's for, it's for work beyond the job description. It's beyond the job description. So okay. Correct. Thank you. That's a good way to put it. All right. Um, so other so other purchase services you see that it's gone from 23 Five, so uh, number 5236, okay. Um, this is, uh, I mean, I think what IDA is, not I think, IDA is trying to do is really trying to clean up a lot of these other categories and is saying that instead of having other supplies, other purchases, etc. Uh, being um, miscellaneous buckets. She's trying to be much better about classifying it in the right bucket. And so therefore you see the movement from there to other um, other places. Uh, I see. Um, okay. Training, Munis, sorry? I, I She's also putting in? Okay. Yes. Okay. Say that loudly. She's also putting in a new chart of accounts mm -hmm. over the next 12 months, which will, uh, I don't know if we'll see all these numbers change, mm -hmm. probably will, but they'll be a lot uh, better organized, uh, the budgeting will be cleaner, mm -hmm. and uh, she'll have more control. Thank you. And okay. one other thing that I wanted to point out is if you look at the 2020 budget, just any of those, the in-state travel, out-state travel, what have you, one of the things I looked at is, is the year-to-date spend, and uh, I compared it and I said, well, for example, um, you know, only small amounts were spent in any of those categories. <coughs> but what was explained to me was that these are encumbered, which means effectively they will be spending them. For uh, there's some uh, Munis conference, there's a Munis conference coming up in Florida, for which there will be out out of state travel. There will be that training expense, which is 15000 that will be used up, etc. Um, other than that, I don't have any other comments on this, uh, on this budget. Okay, so are you recommending as printed? I am recommending it as printed, correct. Okay, is there a second? Second. Discussion or questions? So what is she saying is that the fiscal 2020 amounts that were appropriated there have been encumbered and they will be spent? Correct. Okay, motion's been made and seconded for 345-999. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous? All right. I'd like to do one more. Okay. This is uh, page 145, retirement, and 146. So, how do we do this? Um, I 
I did send around a bunch of documents. I'm sure you've all read them thoroughly. <laughs> so uh, I appreciate that. Uh, we didn't have that much time. <laughs> yes, I, mean, I apologize. It was quite late in the day. Um, but we met with them. I, I know Dean has lots of. I have a ton of them, actually, yeah. I read a quick one. Let's just start with your questions. Then. No, go ahead. I'll wait to the end. <laughs> Oh, All right. Uh, okay. Where should I start? Um, well, in terms of data here, there's not a whole lot, as you can see. So what I would do is just say I open it up to questions, <laughs> and uh, I will answer them as you and, and explain every component of that. If necessary. So, well, okay. Let me start. I think um, eighteen thousand four sixty-eight was the first number that I looked at, and that was the non-contribute, non-contributory pension, and that is uh, one person around. Person. I will not name the name, I shouldn't name the name because this is being recorded, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. So this is the person who is still collecting this. Um, I shouldn't name the name. But that's where that 18,467, 468 is going. Uh, as a survivor, they're collecting that uh, pension. They had born in 1922, so I will not give the name. Uh, they worked for 20 years at all. And uh, another piece of uh, information is uh, one of the oldest people in our town is a lady named Christine who is 103. <laughs> yeah. I thought that was quite... Uh, Christine Callahan. Okay, the last name used to be the uh, town clerk. Ah. And then there was another person who was 99. Did you capture that? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that I thought was fascinating. But those, are, those people are not getting any pension. Only this specifics. No, that's not true. No? No, no. Can I just? Oh, yeah, yeah. So j just for background for people that are new in the committee, there are two uh, pension funds, the contributory pension and the non-contributory pension. This is the non-contributory pension. And about 15 years ago, something like that, the uh, retirement board made an agreement with um, the finance committee that we would, at that time, this there were more living people who were members of this uh, non-contributory pension program. And the total expenditure amount was about $500,000 a year. So we agreed to uh, spend that money as if it was constant, going to have to be spent anyway. And as, <coughs> the, uh, as these people aged out, passed away from the non-contributory pension fund, the balance of that would be contributed, it would be deposited in the uh, OPEB, other post-employment benefit funds for retired employees, for which we have a huge uh, unfunded liability. And we've been doing that for uh, maybe since about uh, fiscal year uh, 2008. And the number uh, has risen, at that time it was 310,000, now it's about 481,000. So. Uh, there is one member still alive in that program, and that's the 18,000 that everyone was referring to. And eventually, uh, the, the amount will be 500,000 a year. To OPEP. Mm -hmm. To OPEP, yes. So currently, that number to OPEP is uh, 500,000 minus 18,460. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we have a letter here from, uh, I think all of this was sent around. Uh, did I mention the PRAC letter? The PRAC letter which mentions the 13,799,000. One hundred 
Split into two pieces, right? Um, yeah. The thirteen seven nine nine. Ninety six percent of it goes to the town and school, and that's thirteen million two forty six nine eleven. And four percent of it goes to the Arlington Housing Authority, mm -hmm. which is five hundred thousand five twenty five five two one ninety seven. There are about there are twenty employees in the Arlington. Read that over here. Sorry? Oh, please be handed to me. Thanks. There are twenty employees in the Arlington Housing Authority. Which is independent of the town. It's not a number that we're we're um, voting for. So that's right. So that's the thirteen million two forty six nine eleven for the town and school is what you're seeing up here in that twenty twenty one budget. Okay, are you recommending it as printed? Yes. Is there a second? Second. second. Questions? Dean. So, <coughs> underlying the um, actuarial, actuarial valuation is a series of assumptions. Like your discount rate, um, you have four years of assets, moving on gains and losses, et cetera, et cetera. Did the well, I know you talked to Rich on it, but at least the administrator speaking for their contributor, contributor retirement. Do you indicate that they were okay with this course, or do you indicate that they were thinking about making any changes? They're, they're, uh, they're not thinking of making any changes. They still anticipate sticking with the 6% uh, per year growth that we uh, negotiated with them uh, that came into effect after the last uh, override. Prior to that, it was, uh, I think it was five and a half percent. Right. So then, my second question, just to confirm it, I don't know if you had talked about it, but in order for that six percent to work, they um, they go through a formula of like of pulling in and out the full funding year. So in good years, they pull it in; in bad years, they pull it out, knowing they can't go past 2040. It's kind of the stop wall there. So they're okay to continue on that. Because there was a period of time where they didn't like doing that, <coughs> if you recall. They're, they're still doing the three-year averaging. Okay. So the, the so the growth is uh, the uh, the growth in the uh, funded balance or the decrease in the unfunded balance is is smoothed by the by a three-year rolling average. Right. Okay. Um, I think um, the general consensus. Well. Hard to say. It's one person that we're talking to, so it's hard to call it a general consensus. But actually, uh, uh, Edith was also is also on the retirement board. Um, the view is that um, you know, barring the effects of the coronavirus or whatever other unknowns huh. occur, uh, they're they're happy with the, with the current forecast. The one factor that um, Rich uh, expressed some concern about was the growth in teachers, the number of teachers, which, which are gonna increase the expenses in the plan. However, um, they just had a report done by, by uh, Larry Stone, the, the, the town's actuary, and uh, my observation is that they, when he does those reports, he takes in the growth of, in, of the different departments, uh, the people who are aging out into the retirement system, and um, turnover. So, uh, you know, my expectation is that since he didn't recommend a change uh, in the contribution, I think it's, uh, and, and, we did, and we did ask specifically, by the way, if PERAC knew about the 6% agreement with the town, between the uh, retirement board and the town. And uh, Rich indicated that uh, they, they did, they were aware of it. It's, it's not a written contract or anything, but they were, verbally uh, dis it was disclosed to them 
and they have signed off on the plan. Okay. Other questions? Any? So, just to cap that off, we are on track to fund by the deadline or before the deadline? Mm -hmm. uh, actually, it's here someplace. Before the deadline. It's this one, right? Yeah. 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 This thing. yeah. So, um, yeah, 2036, basically. Four years ahead of schedule. Okay, four years ahead of schedule. And, and we, there hasn't been a whisper about OPEB becoming a requirement that it yet. We had fears in the past that at some point the state government might force us to fund OPEB that were, you know, under the same kind of regime. And we haven't seen we that have yet. No, there's been no discussion of that. Okay, so it's I still promise. our option. Well, I mean, the, the, the issue is um, that the retirement <coughs> benefits, the health insurance uh -huh. retirement benefits for town employees is not strictly speaking an obligation of the town the, the board of selectmen could re, excuse me the select board mm -hmm. could determine at any time that that wasn't going to be paid anymore therefore it's not a, it's not in some sense a, a strict liability on the other hand if the if the select board did that very likely there would be a suit by retirees mm -hmm. that would take years to resolve mm -hmm. and so um, who knows how that would come out I don't know if this is a statewide um, view or a national view, but the I think it's the GASB, the Government Accounting Standards Board, has come up with a formula. And they say that uh, if you fund your OPEB liability um, at the discount rate of your of the return on your investments, which is around seven and a half percent, then um, no, I said that wrong. Uh, if you fully fund it, then you can use a discount rate of seven and a half percent, and uh, and that would uh, that but that would require us to pay an enormous amount of money. Right. Okay. But it would also reduce the total amount of liability. Since we don't do that, <coughs> we have to calculate the liability using. Uh, essentially the town's cost of funds, which are about one and a half percent or two percent or something like that, which means that we have a huge unfunded liability. Mm -hmm. And we're somewhere uh, in between in the sense that between this uh, $500,000 a year, the 150000 that we vote from the... Uh, the selectman's vote. The mm -hmm. selectman's vote, yeah. plus the uh, $300,000 that we'll put in from the insurance uh, trust fund that we're putting in almost a million dollars a year and we're probably funding this budget this a liability more than most other towns that's okay. probably more you want to know or I don't know no, no, but I, mean, I don't I don't mind the extra information I just know that at one point we had thought we might actually come under some kind of state regulation about it that currently didn't exist and we were worried but it sounds like we're being responsible, and that's all we need to be. I think the uh, the state knows that the numbers are so staggering. That <laughs> There's no point. That if they, you know, they, 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 they put municipalities down sometimes mm -hmm. if they had to fund them. However, mm -hmm. um, if I were the state legislature, I would uh, look ahead and say, as of 2000, as when you are fully funded your pension system, mm -hmm. at that point you've got to use pick a number, 80% of the reduction in your appropriation to fund your uh, OPEP. Because otherwise, if they wait till they're there, they get too close to that number, every mayor and board of selectmen is going to figure out how to spend that money uh, in, in every union. So it's something where you've got to do it ahead of time, where nobody in office now anticipates they'd be in office when that happens. So that's... I've recommended that a few times, but nobody listens. Uh, are there any other questions on this? Oh, John, sorry. Yeah, just a, a minor thing. Um, I was scrolling through this document, FinCom 2020, and um, I noticed that um, for the non-contrib, it, it has a number for uh, FY21 of 18917 
Okay. Other questions? Okay, the motion's been made and seconded for eleven million nine two one two three nine. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Three two twenty. <coughs> Any more, Arif? No, You're on a roll. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> this is hard stuff. It is, and you've been away from it for a few years, so. No, thank you. Okay, other people with budgets. Any budgets for t tonight? Okay, then what I want to do is go through the warrant, and let's see if we can clear out some of the warrant articles. We already did it with one. Well. Okay, th let me throw this out for general discussion. There is an article to increase the salary, or, or to increase, to establish a stipend for the uh, school committee. Um, I think the selectmen have voted favorably on it, but they sort of anticipate the finance committee's going to take a stand somehow. My own initial feeling was as long as they absorb it out of the school budget, that's how they want to spend the money, that's fine. However, I don't anticipate that's what the group who presented this to the selectmen had in mind. Now, there's no appropriation required for fiscal 21, but there would be an appropriation required for fiscal 22. So if this gets passed, I anticipate there'll be a warrant article there next year to put money in, and then it is in our bailiwick. So I, I guess there's two questions. One is, should the school committee get a stipend? Secondly is, where should that money come from? Should it come from the general fund, or should it basically do we take a stand that it should come out of the school budget? Um, if, uh, you know, you could, you could say, well, the selectman stipend comes from the selectman's budget, and the finance committee stipend from ours, and the moderator stipend from the Con Corks budget, I think. Um, and the assessor's stipend is in the assessor's budget. Uh, but of course, those have been there for like, I don't know, 50 years. Uh, so they've been in there for a while. So um, if we take the position of, first of all, if we agree that the school committee members should get a stipend. Uh, that's one thing. If we take the position that this money should be found by the school committee in the, select, in the school budget, which is like 60 or $70 million, um, that would not only be the position this year, but I anticipate next year. Um, so I wanted to get some feedback. Which article is it? Um, I don't have it. <coughs> 13 in the printout that I've got in my hand, but I don't know if that's... It's back in the selectman's articles. 14. 14. So article 14? 14. Yeah. Charlie. So, <clears throat> um, in one sense, we, we have only one question to ask, because whether it comes from the school department budget or whether it comes from the town budget, ultimately the taxpayer is going to pay it. And, and um, the way the school budget is normally treated, and I'm not saying this in any pejorative fashion, is that um, there's a certain uh, strong and deserved interest given to me meeting the requirements of the students, of the, of the pupils. So 
what do we what will we be talking about here? Uh, Twenty thousand dollars or something? Oh, uh, that's three seven twenty one thousand. Twenty one thousand. So so if we added twenty one thousand to that budget, um, you know, oh, and the, and we had you know a four percent increase in the number of pupils, the school committee would say, well, we have to fund the the needs of the new pupils, so we would wind up increasing the school budget on top of that twenty one thousand anyway. Uh, I think the the argument to keep it on the town side is that uh, it puts the jurisdiction, the control of the budget, in the hands of the town meeting as opposed to in the hands of the school committee. Because I think legally, once it's inside the school budget, I don't think town meeting or the finance committee can really say anything about a specific line item. No. Am I, am I right? Mm -hmm. right. Uh, it's accepting of a special law. I think if if we said yes, I think that if we agreed with the selectman's position that the school should, committee should be uh, have a stipend, you could take the position, well then, but the school committee has to figure out where in its $59 million budget it's going to take the money from. In other words, it would have to fund it within the school budget. That would be one way to do it. Or if we funded it in a Warren article, it then became a part of the school budget, then it's, it's in the school budget from then on. I'm not sure if it stays as a Warren article. If anybody, Annie? So, well, so I, think, I think, let me see if I'm correct about the problem you're identifying, Charlie, and that is that the school committee manages that budget. Like, we hand them a general fund appropriation, and then they basically manage that budget without anybody here being able to say anything about it. Whereas the selectmen's budget runs through us, and you know we would know if the selectmen suddenly decided they were going to spend you know twenty five thousand dollars giving themselves a raise, we might not know that on the school. Like, are, are you worried about control yeah. here? Yeah. And so, if that's a worry, and if we think it's a auditing worry or a legal worry, then we should figure that out. I think that is a separate question from whether or not we think the school committee ought to get a stipend which I have an opinion about. Um, but yeah, I, I think I kind of agree with you about the control, that it has to stay on the town side of the budget simply for our ability to control it appropriately and not have the people who are receiving the stipend voting on whether or not to get it. Well, I mean, the school budget does come before us, and it's a big, thick document. And uh, I anticipate there'd be a line item in there under salaries administration for school committee. Sure. And if there isn't, we'd look, we'd can you, ask for one. Can you imagine the, the finance committee saying we're going to not vote for the school budget because of a change in that line item? Exactly. Can I ask one question? Sure, David. Is this retroactive? No. Yeah. I'm sorry? <laughs> oh, I missed that. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not going back. <laughs> Good question. <laughs> now, there'd be, I mean, one of the big factors in past years has been that elected officials who get a stipend mm -hmm. qualify for employee health insurance. Now, that has apparently changed. We get our insurance through um, state. GIC, state program, and GIC will not pay the health insurance of anybody who's not in the pension fund. Mm -hmm. To qualify to be in the pension fund, you must be at least $5,000 a year. Um, so there might be one or two people that are grandfathered, mm -hmm. but very few, and they'll sort of pass on. So new school committee people, if they get paid 3,000, um, they would not qualify to be in the pension system and therefore would not qualify for health insurance. So that issue at least seems to have gone away, and I, I ran this by the town council a couple of different ways. So it seems to me we are talking the three. Mm -hmm. Now, if we keep it separate, we have some control in a Warren article. If we let it go in the school committee budget, theoretically they could bump it up to over 5,000 
and all of a sudden they're in the pension system and getting health insurance. So how to maintain that control is, yeah. is interesting. So I think just to piggyback on Charlie's issue of control, and I do think he's right that it should stay on the town side budget because um, so the year that um, the year that rule changed, that the threshold went from being elected, it used to be you're elected and you, have, you make a salary or anything <laughs> to you are elected and you've had at least $5,000. We, um, the only board at the time who had a stipend of 5000 or more was the Board of Assessors. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I don't remember, if you remember Charlie, we had a very uncomfortable meeting, Charlie and I, with the Board of Assessors, <laughs> where we asked them to lower by a dollar so they could get 4999 right? And there was all sorts of threats they were going to go to town meeting and fight us to the death and call us names and all sorts of things like that. But ultimately what they did, this is why I think the power of town meeting is persuasive, is the then chair of the board of assessors, before we could stand up and defend this, declared that the board of assessors the night before had voted to lower their salaries to 4900 And that's why I'm sure if you look in the book, it's 4900 Because the optics of having to go to town meeting and explain why they were the only board in town who was going to continue to accrue pension credits and health insurance benefits was not somewhere they wanted to be. And I think that 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 what by if you were to keep it on the town side, you eliminate all of that sort of I'm just gonna call it nonsense that you could have if it retained in the school budget. And, and so yes, I think Charlie makes a very good point. David? If, the, if these folks are of a three thousand dollar stipend, <coughs> the town we don't we do not pay the social security. I, I'm sorry, David. We do not pay the social security. No. The town of Allen. They pay into a um, an annuity. Yeah. So the annuity would have to come out of that. A portion of annuity would have to come out of that three thousand. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Just like it comes out of ours. <laughs> <laughs> so we can build up this massive. Retirement fund. So, um, the way to maintain the control is next year when this comes up, is to have a Warren article that has the school committee stipend. Mm -hmm. If it passes town meeting. So I guess the first question is, why don't we take a step back? How do people feel about the school committee getting a stipend? I think okay, Peter. I have a question. Uh, does anybody know who Krista Kelleher is? Yes. Is she related to the school to the school board in some? Oh, I don't think so. School committee in some way. No. Do you have any idea what her motivation is? No. I guess I could ask her. She may just be the person who was the first one to sign the yeah. papers. Well, I, th I think we're dealing with an issue. However, it was brought up. You remember uh, a former school committee member brought this up mm -hmm. many years ago. Mm -hmm. um, actually, it was, yeah, it was a former school committee member. And at that point, we decided not to, I think largely because of the health insurance mm -hmm. issue. Annie? Um, I, I just want to say that I think the school committee members should get a stipend. I mean, they're the only elected board that doesn't. They certainly put in as much time as the assessors and the board of selectmen, if not more. So I support this article. Do you want me to make that motion and see what's going on, or do you want to keep talking? Okay. Why don't we see any, anybody? Uh, okay. If you'd like to make a motion, go ahead. So I move that we support this article. Second. Okay. So it's made, uh, been made and seconded to support a three thousand dollars stipend for each member of the school committee. Is that your motion? That's my motion. Discussion. Alan. Yeah, I, I support that. I think the, in, in the comments. If we recommend it, the comment should have some some way of ensuring that it's transparent and controllable outside of the the model of the school committee budget. Mm -hmm. I don't think we have to say is that a is that a second line in the school budget, you know, a big number and then a little number, or is it a separate board article, whatever. We, you know, we can figure that out next year. But I think in the comments this year we should indicate we want it to be open and transparent and independently determined independently in the school budget. Okay, John. Uh, 
my comment is it seems reasonable given what the assessor is paid, but I don't think I have the information to vote yay or nay. What is the average stipend of the 12 towns that Arlington compares itself to for school board? That would be information that would help me know whether this was typical or atypical. Right now the only data is that the assessors get paid 4,900. Does anybody have that information? I do know if you were a school committee member in the city of Cambridge, you get $47,000 yeah. a year. And Waltham that's is not one of our 12 competitors. Waltham, Waltham is like eight or 10. I'm sorry, any? Waltham is like eight or 10,000 a year. I mean, it's very high. I don't know about Lexington. I mean, if, if we don't want to take a vote tonight, I'm happy to, you know, table the motion and do the research and find out. It won't be that hard. Um, I think to where the $3,000 number comes from is that's what the select get. I, I think it's reasonable. Okay. I just, it, it, yeah. if 11 of the 12 towns had zero stipend, then that would be interesting data to me. Yeah, you, you, I don't know. you said that one has 8,000. Okay, so John, are you making a motion to table uh, Annie's recommendation until this is this information is obtained? Okay, second. Okay, please and second it. Any further issues, discussion? John, uh, I just had one thought, which is in terms of this issue of where to put the budget uh, for the stipends, um, or which budget to put the, mm -hmm. that that amount. You know, I'm looking at the, for example, the select board budget, and besides the stipends, they have administrative and support staff and other expenses. Mm -hmm. Are those are there comparable expenses on the for the school committee? And if so, are those in the school budget? Um, and so I'm kind of thinking like if we're going to talk about keeping the stipends separate on the town side. Um, but they already have other school committee expenses on the school side that seems a little odd. I, John? I, I believe it, uh, their administrative kinds of needs are supported by the superintendent's office. And I, I think yeah, it, it, so they don't have separate? No. Okay. They have, John is right, in addition they have their own their own secretary, but the secretary also works under the uh, direction of the superintendent. Okay. Alan? So that would make it cleaner. Okay. In at least the draft article 14, it has the number 3,000. Does that mean that when it comes to town meeting, it's going to be 3,000 or nothing? I think it means 3,000 or under. But I, I don't have the article in front of me. What is it? How does it? It's a compensation consisting of an annual stipend of three thousand dollars per member, commencing in fiscal year twenty twenty two. Yeah, I, I would think it means three thousand or under. I think the moderators interpreted that's a cap. Okay. Uh, I'm not to speak for the moderator, but that's the position he's taken in the past. Charlie. So, um, <clears throat> I, first of all, I support any of this. I think um, they the school committee. Um, puts a lot of work in, mm -hmm. immense amount of work, and um, but I, I I strongly believe that this should be um, carried and controlled by town meet carried on the town side and and, and reviewed by town meeting a, on a continual basis. But it says here in Article 14 that um, you know commencing in fiscal year 22 or take any action related thereto. So could we not put that caveat with respect to where the budget is carried in this article? In other words, identify a certain place within the town that, budgets? That it, that it be carried uh, not in the school budget, but on the town budget in a warrant article to be voted every year at town meeting. Yeah, I think we could do that. Okay, okay so uh, in line with my usual uh, positions that I only assign people who are enthusiastic enough uh, to find this information. Uh, I have a note. <laughs> okay, Annie and John, could you pick the 12 communities that are we usually identify ourselves with? And uh, I would think if you just called the school department at each superintendent's office at each place, you could find that. Uh, the Massachusetts Association of School Committee has a, school committees has a list. 
Yeah. Already done. One stop shop. I'm staring right at it. I'm not okay. going to read them all, but I'm staring at it. Okay, okay. you and Diane, could you call them up? Yep. Okay. So. I'll send it to you. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm accepting that the motion to table uh, until this information obtained. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. So. Annie, could you see if you could have that for Wednesday? And maybe email it around. He's, he's already got a resource for me. I'll make a little spreadsheet and send it to Okay. okay. And, uh, you know, you might want to throw in, be, I don't know if we compare ourselves to Medford, Waltham, or nobody compares themselves to Cambridge. But at least make sure Medford and Waltham are in just so we have. Okay. Data. That's second. Uh, that's what uh, we'll hopefully get into that. Um, so it might give us some thought to figure out where in the, either in the budgets or a warrant article uh, to put the stipend. So put your thinking hats on and we'll talk about it. Okay, what I'd like to do now is continue down um, Article 25. Now, um, this article was put in by the Board of Selectmen. Um, I have yet been able to, we keep playing telephone tag with the member of the Board of Selectmen um, who made the recommendation, but this came up because the town manager presented the budget to the Board of Selectmen in mid-January. He put the caveat that the governor's budget comes at the end of the month. So that could change some of these numbers. And somebody who says, well, why don't we wait the whole budget process until after the governor's numbers have come out? Um, and uh, uh, they put the Warren article in to change it. It has to change the uh, Town Manager Act. Uh, I am really nervous about this uh, because, you know, we get the budgets in mid-January. Then people have got to set aside time to study their budgets. Then people have got to set some time to talk to the other people in their subcommittee. And then they've got to set up an interview with the department head. And then they've got to talk again. And then they've got to obviously present here. And, um, and some of you I know, uh, uh, to specifically praise David and Peter, you know, get that process going immediately because the minute we start meeting in February, they've got budgets for us. That couldn't be done if they only got the budgets a couple days ahead of time. And that'll just squeeze us into March. Um, so I don't know why they said so as to afford additional time for the town manager to submit. That makes sense. And the select board and the finance committee to consider because it takes away the more time the manager has, the less time we get to do this um, unless you're going to move town meeting back. And I don't think there's any desire to do that. Uh, so I'd like to recommend that we oppose this article Second. and uh, leave it the way it is. So moved. Uh, <clears throat> I, I agree with you, Mr. Chairman. And the other thing that this doesn't recognize is that just because the governor puts the budget out doesn't mean that's going to be the budget. Yeah. And, and uh, I can remember many times where we waited until July before mm -hmm. we actually knew what the budget was going to be. I mean, we voted you know, right through town meeting uh, based on, on uh, let me say, preliminary numbers or un, you know, numbers that weren't firm. <coughs> and so I don't think this adds anything at all to our knowledge or ability to plan. So I would, I would definitely oppose it. Okay, motion, John. Uh, so have you talked to anybody? I talked to the manager. And, and he said the motion the, to do this came from the a member of the Board of Selectmen who shall remain nameless, but was once a former member of this committee. I talked to him. <laughs> I, I talked to him. Oh, you did? Yeah. Okay. I suggested that it wasn't a popular idea. <laughs> <laughs> but the article's in the warrant. Um, so, uh, I'm just wondering whether, upon further reflection, they might want to the, 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 the principal motivation, I think, was to give the manager um, put less pressure on the manager or something to that effect. I don't, I don't know. What's the manager's position on it? Well, he supports it. He does. 
Well, I mean, secondhand information. Okay. A uh, motion has been made and seconded to recommend no action on uh, this article, which I think is 25. <coughs> Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, no action, unanimous. Three, two, 20. Okay, uh, 48's position reclassification. Al? I, who's yes. Gonna, who's gonna write the essay? I will. What? I'm sorry, the, the uh, motion and the comment? Article 25, yeah. Yeah, I will. Okay, okay uh, I talked to Carolyn. She hopes to have position reclassifications ready for her on Wednesday. Um, collective bargaining, Article 49, we've already passed. Um, 52, we have to hear from the manager, which will be on the 11th. 53, we're doing capital budget. We are hearing this Wednesday. And we'll also hear their transferred numbers and their rescission numbers. So back through 55. 57, we've already voted on. 58, uh, we'll hear from the manager. That's the public access budget. Uh, 59, sewer, we've already voted on. 50, 60, we've, water, we've already voted on that. Minuteman, we hear on the 9th. They're coming up. And uh, Annie, don't, I assume you've reminded them we'd like to get the. Yeah, I'm having lunch with uh, the superintendent tomorrow, and I will make sure that they understand that you send the presentation in advance. Okay. And then send it also to the moderator after we've voted it. Uh, committees and commissions, we just did that. That's 62. 63. Now 63, um, going through the manager's budgets. Now this is appropriation celebrations and events. Um, in the past, the Patriots Day celebration, Veterans Day and Memorial Day, we've appropriated $5,667. Display of American flags, and we've appropriated zero. Placing of American flags on vet graves of veterans, which is a state requirement, is 4,500. And town day celebration, we've done 5,000. So is there a motion for those appropriations under 63? Move. Second. What about Veterans Day Parade? Uh, that's all part of that. How much is it? How much? 5,667. In other words, all three of those parades are under one. I mean, the Veterans in the Memorial Day is a small group of people that march from uh, uh, Walgreens up to there. So that doesn't cost anything. Uh, the, all the money really goes into Patriots Day. Uh, any other questions? So again, Patriots Day, Veterans Memorial, 5667. Placing of American flags on graves of veterans is 4,500. Town Day celebration is 5,000. So any further discussion? Did I get a motion? So moved. OK, second. second. Motion's made and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? OK, favorable action, unanimous. It's 95, 5, 6, 6, 7, 67, 1. So 15, 167. Okay, of 64 is appropriations. Um, I have a message into Sandy to get the indemnification of medical costs. Uh, for new people, these are costs that are not covered by insurance. Um, and so we get a basically anything they have to pay out of pocket for the previous calendar year goes into this. So I have to get an updated number. 
65 water bodies we've done, uh, 66 and 67 we've done, uh, 68. 68 is the uh, Harry Barber program, uh, request of $7,500. Uh, this is the amount the Board of the uh, Senior Council on Aging, uh, so people can uh, work for within the town for a certain number of hours uh, and get a small stipend which they can then use to pay their rent. Um, $7,500 is what we've appropriated for the last 30 years, whatever. So is there a motion? Second. Second? Okay, moved and seconded. $7,500 for the uh, Harry Barber Community Service Program. Okay, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous? 3-2. Uh, bike share, we're gonna hear from the manager. Uh, Charlie, are, are you have anything on Article 70, the OPEB? Um, we have the, well, we voted the, the non-contrib. Uh, the two numbers are 150,000 and 300,000. They've been verified by it. Okay, so there's still 300,000 left yeah. in the, okay, so this is Article 70. So 300,000 from the health care trust fund, 155 is what we've always appropriated. And I come up with 481, 532. Um, 500,000 minus 18, 468. 481, 532, yeah, I actually have it right here. Okay. 481, so, especially for new people, let me explain. This is the money we've been putting away to o for OPEP. Does anybody have the balance? Was that in one of those uh, reports you sent out? Yeah, yeah it's about $8 million. It's about $8 million. I'm sorry, how much is in the fund now? It's about $8 million. The actual report. Oh, it's 16 now. Wow. Yeah, no, it's 16 million? Sorry. Well, that was pretty good. First, that was probably done over a week ago, so. No, it was done December 31st. December 31st. Yeah, I know. December 31st. It hasn't been that bad. Okay, so there's three sums that go into this. The first one under A is the 500,000 minus the 18,468, which is the last person on the contributory, which gives us 481,532. B is appropriates into 155. Now the Board of Selectmen took a position when they, for retirees, they increased the amount they pay from 10% to 15% and required that that money go into the OPEB fund. And they said, if it doesn't go into the OPEB fund, if somebody tries to get it into the general fund, they'll put the health, they'll reduce the, uh, they'll put the health insurance for the retirees back to 10%. So, I don't know if they remember that, but, that's what they took. So that's 155. <laughs> and the 300,000 is from the trust fund. When we had the health insurance ourselves, we had to have like a $3 million trust fund because basically it was self-funded, which means we didn't have any insurance. So we had about 3 million there. So we've been taking 300,000 a year out of that since we don't need it anymore since we're on the GIC to fund that. So 481-532. 155000 and 300000 Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Any further, any discussion or questions? Dean? Yeah, so I brought this up last year, and um, the chair brought it up actually earlier in the night, which is when we were talking about the pension, so the pension plan, I mean, we said 2036 is the full funding year for the pension, yep. but it's a partial payment. So look at it right now, it's like six million. So it ramps up, ramps up, that's at six months. It's really done in 2035. Mm -hmm. And so I think what a lot of us have thought in the back of our heads is that when we reach full funding on the pension plan, that contribution annually would be um, shifted to go into the OPEP trust fund and it would be <coughs> town policy. 
Now, why does it matter? Because it's 2035 and it feels like it's a long way away, right? But, you know, it's nine years away, or nine budget years away, from hitting the five-year plan. Mm -hmm. So as a finance committee, I think it's important at some point that we have to adopt a policy, and we have to start telling town meeting that it seems like it's a long way away, but as soon as, like, as soon as we get to full funding on the pension, we gotta start funding the OPEP. Because what I don't want to be is in a situation where we have never discussed it, and we're putting together some like, so, or somebody's putting together some mythical five-year plan and override scenario in the future, and they should, well, you know, if we pass this override, it's great, because we're gonna get this $20 million pickup once the pensions are fully funded. And so maybe this doesn't have to be the year, that we start talking about this or start putting it into the warrant article or something, but it's, it, it's got to be at some point in the next four or five years that it becomes our policy. Because the 2030 five year plan is when it's going to first hit to show that there's a zero or it's a not big number, the pension line. Hmm. We've got to have a policy. We've got to tell me fully embracing this as a policy before that. I wonder if it would be something that would fit in a bylaw. Give it more. No, no, no. no. Oomph. Danny? No, bad idea. I mean, I, you know, there are just certain things that shouldn't go in bylaws because then you have to pass another bylaw to undo them. I think this is a policy agreement that should start with the long range planning committee. And I think there's two competing interests to balance. One is funding OPAB, and the other is um, uh, uh, adding some money to give us a smoothing function on the, the structural deficit. I mean, we got nine years out of a $3 million drop in our health insurance costs. So there's something to be said to getting a nice glide path past some overrides or like changing the bumpiness of overrides out of some of this money. Not all of it, obviously, but some of it. So I think there's more policy development to do here than just us voting on some paragraph. And I think the Long Range Planning Committee should put it on their agenda, and then it should go from them to a town. I mean, I think you're right. I'm reading these before I notice that Long Range Planning is going to make this recommendation. Um, I also think it has to be considered in the context of the upcoming I'm not sure that this is something that you want to say right before we ask people to raise their taxes. Oh. Okay. Well, we'll have. <laughs> <laughs> I have a different suggestion. So, so um, <coughs> what we probably before we discuss this with uh, with the town meeting is we should ask um, the the retirement board to fund an actuarial study about how much we actually should be putting into <coughs> the OPEP, given that, that we have a $16 million amount in the fund right now. If we keep putting in, maybe not, the, you know, maybe when the health insurance trust fund empties out, we'll only be putting in uh, 650000 a year. But, you know, by the time we get there, we're going to have a certain amount of money, right? So we ought to actually do an actuarial study to find out what we should be putting in there to cover both the normal cost and the unfunded liability of the OPEB um, issues. He did. What's that? He's, he resent it out. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear He you. sent it out tonight. It's in the packet. So, so what is the number? I'd have to look. I'd have to go through it. But well, let's... Uh, but I mean, I think that's the way to <coughs> approach it, is to yeah. have a, a real number as opposed to an idea. So we could put the idea together with a real number and make it work. Yeah. Okay, Alan? Uh, last year, and I can't remember why, we had $450 and some cola from the state. Mm -hmm. yeah, do you remember? In, 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 in the, you know, the total. So it was 955-450. I mean, oh, I guess we, don't have we never could come up with an exact number. Okay, let's uh, we can t let's talk about this more. Uh, it's it's a big thing, and we want to establish a policy 
earlier rather than later. Um, but I don't think we have to make that decision tonight. But I think both good suggestions. Okay, so um, motion has been made and seconded for those three numbers for the OPEB. Any further discussion? Can you read those off again, please? 481532, 155000, and 300,000. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, 71, you want to make a recommendation on that? Uh, That's the standard. I just uh, was put down, what's 71? I just put down my warrant. They said we're uh, appropriate zero to uh, appropriate pension adjustment for former 25 year accidental disability. Okay. It's the one where we keep everybody up at least 50%. Yes. If, uh, so we, we, we support it, but do we have to provide a number? No, we, we always do zero. Okay, I move zero, Article 71. Okay. okay. Article 71 is the, uh, is the article that we passed every year. So uh, when a, a, a employee is retired, and he's only getting a, a, a COLA on 15,000, I think it is now, whereas the, all the town employees are getting their COLA on the whole salary. So gradually that, that employee is going to be getting less and less of a percentage of what that person makes now. All this does is put a floor of 50%. So when you get finally to that point, that's going to be out like 20, 25 years. When you finally get to that point, this we can appropriate a set of money, but usually they've always had the money within the budget, within their retirement system, to keep those employees at 50%. Um, and there's a little stipe, there's a little... Uh, uh, restriction in the middle uh, because of a loophole we had to close back in 2010. Uh, so the motions were made for zero dollars under Article 71 to do this act. Is there a second? Second. Any questions? Just for a comment. It's yeah. Normally the, the impact on the retirement fund itself is about $25,000. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Alan, I'll abstain. <coughs> okay, all those in favor, please raise your hand. Opposed? Abstain? Okay, on three two. What was your count? No. Fifteen zero one. Thank you. Okay, Article seventy two. We've already done. Article seventy three is this is an amount of money taken from over overlay reserve surplus accounts. <coughs> uh, I, to fund the budget. I propose we postpone for a couple of days. Okay, that's fine. Uh, okay, but Article 74 is transfer from funds of uh, cemetery. Uh, Wednesday night. I'm sorry? Wednesday night. Okay. Article 40 or 75, use of free cash. We've always used half against the budget and rolled half. Half of that would be 5 million. Nine zero one three eight eight five million nine zero one three eight eight. That's half of our certified free cash. Do I have a motion? So I moved. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Any discussion? Any questions? Sort of been the policy. We use half. We roll half. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Unanimous, 3-2, and 76 is Appropriation Long-Term Stabilization Fund. Uh, we've been appropriating 100000 into this for eons. 
Um, so moved. Second? Second. Okay. Any questions, discussion? Brian? What's the balance on it? I would guess about three million three. Thank you. Any further questions or discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, unanimous, three, two. And 77 is the uh, fiscal stability fund. That will be the last article we vote on. Okay, well, we got a lot done today. Now, on uh, we have the Capital Budget Committee coming in. That takes a good chunk of the day. Who has budgets for well, we should, Wednesday? We should have health and human services. Okay, health and human services. Hopefully we'll have the treasurer. Okay, great. Others? Any other budgets? Even little ones. Okay, well, that, that should fill in some space. Uh, any other business before the committee? Okay, uh, meeting is adjourned. Thank you.